current management took charge of the Bank of Ghana in early 2017, uh, the sector was faced with many challenges. Uh, we inherited a financial system which was under a considerable state of distress with banks that were not meeting capital adequacy requirements, uh, banks that had their capital eroded with high non-performing loans. Some of these banks were insolvent and illiquid. Others were solvent but illiquid. So this state of affairs was largely the result of poor corporate governance, false financial reporting, and insider dealings. The central bank continued to provide liquidity support to these failing banks without an addressing the underlying problems that led to the liquidity and the insolvency of these institutions. In short, the financial system had reached a tipping point, and as you all know, we could not continue with that business style. So the Bank of Ghana has embarked on a comprehensive reform agenda with the objective of cleaning up the sector, strengthening the regulatory and supervisory framework with a view to creating a more resilient banking sector. As you all know, as part of this reform exercise, the licenses of seven banks were revoked over the last 16 months. And we took steps to ensure that they exited the market in an orderly manner. Furthermore, uh, the bank on 11 September 2017 issued the Minimum Capital Directive by which all banks were required to increase their minimum paid up capital to 400 million by 31st December 2018. Banks were required to comply with the new minimum paid up capital through fresh capital injection capitalization of income surplus, or a combination of the two. The Minimum Capital Directive was part of regulatory measures that were aimed at strengthening the banking sector to make it more resilient to shocks, as well as to help position the banks to better support the growing needs of the Ghanaian economy. It was also the expectation of the Bank of Ghana that the recapitalization exercise would help promote consolidation in the banking industry through sustainable mergers and acquisitions, along with stronger corporate governance structures and risk management systems and practices. Following the recapitalization exercise that has just ended at the end of December 2018, we now have 23 universal banks operating in Ghana. These banks have all met the new minimum paid up capital of 400 million Ghana CDs. In particular, 16 banks have met the new minimum paid up capital requirement of 400 million through the capitalization of income surplus and fresh capital injection. The Bank of Ghana has approved three applications for mergers. Consequently, the First Atlantic Merchant Bank Limited and Energy Commercial Bank have merged. Omni Bank and Bank Sahel Sahara have merged. And First National Bank and GHL Bank have merged. The three resulting banks out of these mergers have all met the new minimum capital requirement. Some private pension funds in Ghana have injected fresh equity capital in five indigenous banks through a special purpose holding company named Ghana Amalgamated Trust Limited. In addition to the state-owned banks, that is ADB, NIB, benefiting from the GATT scheme, 
the other beneficiary banks, the merged OMI and Sahel Sahara, Universal Merchant Bank, and Prudential Bank were selected by GATT on the basis of their solvency and good corporate governance. You can get more details of the GATT scheme from the GATT itself and the Ministry of Finance. To ensure that the capital provided by banks indeed represents quality capital in the amounts required to meet the minimum capital directive, the Bank of Ghana adopted and implemented a rigorous capital verification process. In the process, the Bank of Ghana has undertaken comprehensive due diligence on new investors in banks and has verified the sources of funds for the recapitalization. Some of this verification process is still ongoing and will be validated by the external auditors of banks as part of the 2018 external audit. Resources from GATT will be used to recapitalize the two state-owned banks, that is ADB and, and NIB, to help drive and promote long-term sustainable financing for agricultural and industrial expansion. The government has notified the Bank of Ghana that it intends to restructure NIB through governance and management reforms, as well as streamlining its business model to help refocus it as a bank on industrialization. To help ensure that these reforms succeed, the Bank of Ghana today has appointed an advisor for NIB, first one to Section 101 of the Banks and Specialized Deposit Taking Institutions Act of 2016, that is Act 930. The advisor would advise the management of the bank with a view to helping improve the affairs of the bank. This advisor would hold office until otherwise advised by the Bank of Ghana and will furnish the bank with a status report on NIB within three months and as frequently as the Bank of Ghana may require. Ladies and gentlemen, GN Bank was unable to comply with the minimum capital directive by 31st December 2018. Consequently, the bank has applied for and Bank of Ghana has approved the grant of the savings and loans company license. The bank has also approved a transition plan submitted by GN for winding down aspects of its business which are not compatible with the savings and loans company license. The Bank of Ghana will closely monitor implementation of the approved transitional plan which is expected to be completed by the end of June 2019. In this regard, the bank has also appointed an advisor for GN Bank, pursuant to Section 101 of the Banks and Specialized Deposit Taking Institutions Act of 2016 to advise the management of GN with a view to ensuring a smooth transition to a viable savings and loans company. The advisor will hold office until otherwise advised by the Bank of Ghana and will furnish the Bank of Ghana with a status report on GN Bank within three months and as frequently as the Bank of Ghana may require. The Bank of Baroda Limited was licensed by the Bank of Ghana as a universal bank on 28th January 2008. It is a wholly owned subsidiary of Bank of Baroda India which is in turn wholly owned by the government of India. By a letter dated 9th April 2018, the Bank of Ghana was notified by the Bank of Baroda India, the parent company of Bank of Baroda Ghana Limited, of its decision to divest, sell its entire 100% equity in the bank due to the government of India's decision to rationalize the overseas operations of the branches and subsidiaries of Indian public sector banks. 
the Bank of Ghana has since approved a request for a voluntary winding up of the operations of Bank of Baroda Ghana Limited effective 31st December 2018. To ensure an orderly exit and to safeguard the interest of depositors and customers, the Bank of Ghana has approved an assumption agreement between the Bank of Baroda Ghana Limited and Standing Bank Ghana Limited, under which the latter would assume all deposits and selected loan assets of the bank. The Bank of Ghana will closely monitor the transition and is confident that Standing Bank Ghana Limited will ensure that depositors of Bank of Baroda Limited continue to have access to their deposits. Pursuant to Section 123 of the Bank's and Specialized Deposit Taking <coughs> Institutions Act 2016, that is Act 930, the Bank of Ghana has revoked the banking licenses of Premium Bank Limited and Heritage Bank Limited with effect from the date of this notice and has appointed Mr. Vish Ashiabo of PricewaterhouseCoopers as receiver for the two banks. Complete details of the basis of which the licenses of the two banks have been revoked will be attached to this press release. Among other things, Premium Bank was found to be insolvent as of 30th November 2018 with a capital adequacy ratio of negative 125.62%. Heritage Bank, among other things, obtained its banking license on 4th October 2016 on the basis of capital with questionable sources. Furthermore, the bank was unable to meet the new minimum capital requirement of 400 as of 31st December 2018. The Bank of Ghana has approved a purchase and assumption agreement between the receiver and Consolidated Bank Ghana Limited, under which the receiver has transferred some assets and liabilities of the two banks to CBG. All deposits, current, savings, fixed deposit accounts of the two banks have been transferred to Consolidated Bank with effect from the date of this notice. The Government of Ghana has issued a bond in the face of 1.4 billion CDs to the Consolidated Bank to cover the gap between the value of good assets and liabilities of the two banks transferred to CBG. Let me assure depositors of the two banks that their deposits are safe and customers would have full access to their funds. To conclude, ladies and gentlemen, it has been an eventful last 20 months during which the Bank of Ghana has had to take the necessary bold steps to clean up the banking sector and to reposition it to support the economic growth and transformation agenda for Ghana. The just ended recapitalization exercise has repositioned the banking sector as better capitalized, liquid, stronger, and more resilient. The ongoing strengthening of the regulatory and supervisory framework will also ensure that the sector is well governed, well managed, and better supervised to restore and maintain much needed confidence in the sector. In particular, the Bank of Ghana expects that shareholders of banks will exercise control over these institutions, not for the benefit of shareholders and related and connected parties, but primarily in the interest of depositors, creditors, employees, and other stakeholders. Secondly, bank boards will be composed of persons that are capable of exercising strong and independent oversight. They are expected to ensure that the interests of all relevant stakeholders are protected, that risk management will be integrated in the strategic focus of governance and management of these institutions, and that the banks will ensure compliance with the regulatory requirements and ethical standards are embedded in overall risk management. We 
we would also commit to enhance our supervisory systems, processes, and our teams to be better able to identify early warning signals, enforce the regulatory requirements, and ensure that prompt corrective action is taken by banks to recover quickly from any signs of distress. The Bank of Ghana remains committed to promoting a safe, sound, stable, and resilient financial sector and count on the cooperation of all stakeholders.